So I have a song this morning. Grab my guitar. It's one that we used to sing in a lot in church when we were, uh, well, still, but uh, it's Oh for a Mighty Outpouring, Send It on Every Heart. Oh for a Holy Ghost Stirring in My Hungry Heart. Or some, some will say, in my humble heart, let it start. Purge away all that will hinder. Cause me to seek thee afresh. Open the floodgates of heaven. Come, and thy people now bless. If you know it, I hope you're singing along. And in the meantime, maybe my morning voice will clear up. But... Oh, for a mighty outpouring. Send it on every heart. Oh, for a Holy Ghost stirring in my hungry heart, let it start. Purge away all that would hinder, cause me to seek thee afresh. Open the floodgates of heaven. Come and thy people now bless. Oh, for a whole, oh, for a mighty outpouring, send it on every heart. Oh, for a Holy Ghost stirring in my hungry heart, let it start. Purge away all that would hinder. Cause me to seek the afresh Open the floodgates of heaven Come and thy people now bless One more time Oh, for a mighty outpouring Send it on every heart Oh, for a Holy Ghost stirring In my hunger heart, let it start. <clears throat> Purge away all that would hinder. Cause me to seek the afresh. Open the floodgates of heaven. Come and thy people now bless. Reminds me of the song, um, is it Have Thine Own Way? But it talks about begin a revival and start it in me. And that's the attitude we need to have. Not so worried about everyone else, but about me. So when I first started this, um, or was thinking about starting this song in a Bible reading, I was initially thinking that I would start in Romans. Well, I decided against that and started in Ephesians. But we, we finished that. So I think I'm going to back up just a bit and we'll start reading in Romans 1. If you have your Bibles, follow along. And I'm pretty sure that anyone reading on here also is, uh, has a Bible app either on their phone, which is a wonderful thing, you can carry the Word of God in letter everywhere you go. Easy to flip to, easy to get to, easy to change chapters. So you can follow along on that or on your laptop or your computer. I'm reading from the King James. Just That's what I like. That's what I go to. Um, I, it's not like I... It's, it's not like it's the only one I read. I, I often read others for reference. I, I, I love some of the other ones, maybe just for clarification on some things, or if I want a different view of it. But generally, everything I need is in my King James Bible and a dictionary. And that, that's a, a good, actually a good point to mention is if you come upon something in the scriptures that you don't understand, whether it's a, just a word, 
there because there's a lot of words that maybe we don't use so much anymore. So if you come upon a word and you don't know what it is, what I would suggest is, first of all, read the whole context of the scripture and even the other scriptures around it. More than, more often than not, you will get a pretty good idea about that word, about what that word means. Especially reading Paul's writings. He will more often than not repeat himself in some way with some other words. So you'll usually get a good idea. So look around, read the other scriptures, pray about it. You know, the author of this, who wrote this, the Holy Spirit, is with you while you're reading. And he's the one that can explain it best. Okay? Another thing is, have a dictionary nearby. Look up. You know, if you don't know what lasciviousness means, well, just look it up. Uh, there's a lot of other words that, that we uh, can gain clarity from. But I would uh, not to be too concerned about how much you read, but make sure that you're understanding as best you can you know, the, what you are reading. Now, to me, the very most important thing is if you have trouble with something, whether you, you think in yourself, oh, I just can't believe that, or I can't understand that. You've looked it up, you're having trouble with it. Just do what I've been told, is just put it up on the shelf. And God will reveal that to you in good time. All right. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that you, the author of this, the Holy Spirit, is with us this morning to give us direction, to help us with what we are reading, to make it applicable to our lives, and to bring forth the change in our lives that we need so that hopefully our light will shine to others that are round about, that we can bear the fruit that you're looking for in this wonderful garden that you've planted. Thank you in Jesus' name. So we're starting from Romans 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore, by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also called in Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit, in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end you may be established. That's a wonderful thing. That is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, 
to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Interesting. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. I am without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving their natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working in that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God, in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasting, Adventures of evil things, disobedient to parents. It's quite a list. Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do them, but have pleasure in them that do them. That was Romans 1. Like I've said before, I, I'm going to restrain myself from giving much commentary. I believe that the Holy Spirit can speak to us these things. My only advice would be to find, find out what words that you don't know about. Pray about these scriptures. And if I could give, I would say, my number one piece of advice... For reading the scriptures and it's this when you're reading the scriptures or when you're hearing the Word of God in one way always assume that you're the one being talked to always assume that you're the one that needs to know these things so often we think, oh, well, that doesn't apply to me, but it sure applies to him. You will learn nothing that way. Even if you think it doesn't apply to you. So, for example, I'll just give a little example. Men, if there's any men listening, if Paul in the scriptures is talking to the women, well, you can learn from that too. Or if they're talking to the, the children. Because you need, you need to know how to think about the women in the way that, that Paul is talking to. Or if he's talking to children, you need to know that too. So 
there's nothing in here that is not applicable to each and every person who's reading it. So that would be my very biggest piece of advice. Always consider it being spoken to you. I was brought up, my dad told me once that, and I, I, I forget the exact words that he used, but say you're in the workplace and you hear an instruction given out by the boss, always assume that it's to you. Have your ears ready to do whatever you've been told to do. And then if you find out, well, that was for someone else, well, that's fine. But always assume that you're the one being given the instruction. Okay, that's my advice. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Thank you for coming along on this little journey with me. I thought and prayed for a long time about doing this and I hope it's a blessing for you as much as it is a blessing for me.